Let's get a backup audio. Always good to have. Ready? Okay. Hi, I'm Mark Golden. I'm standing here with Brian Green, author of many, many famous books that he writes about the multiverse. Some that right now he's doing is a TV show. He's doing something a little bit different than books, and it's called Fabric of the Cosmos, and I believe it's uh, premiering on PBS, correct? PBS November 2nd, and it is based on one of my books with the same title, The Fabric of the Cosmos. Of course. So what I would like to ask you first is there's been a lot of speculation, not that I necessarily agree, but that the concept of a multiverse is a hypothesis. It won't even be considered a theory. Now, how would you dispute that, or would oh, you I accept don't, it? I don't dispute it at all. In fact, one of the themes of the program is to describe the various perspectives in the scientific community on the possibility of a multiverse. Some think it's utter nonsense. Some in the program say they think it might be confirmed within 100 years. My own perspective, which I think does color the overall message of the film, is that it is an interesting and compelling possibility that answers some questions that otherwise we are unable to address, but which as of today has not a shred of experimental or observational support behind it. And you can't believe anything until it has that support. And the program describes how we might one day get observational support for this idea. But as of today, there's no reason to take this idea as solid science, because as yet it's not. As I spoke with Dr. Kaku yesterday, we were talking about the progression of technology and how in the next 20, 30, 40 years, we may hit a point of a quote-unquote technological singularity. Ray Kurzweil believes that it's going to happen by 2030. Now, is your opinion on this any way correlated to the discovery of a uh, concrete multiverse? No, I don't see how a multiverse really would impact any of these kinds of ideas which are relevant really to how technology and science evolves in our single universe. What I would say is the deeper we understand the universe, we always seem to find loopholes to things that say we can't go any further, we can't go any deeper. So my own feeling is that the depth of our understanding of fundamental science has a profound impact on the questions you're asking, but the multiverse I think is probably not the aspect of science most relevant. So now some people that may not be familiar with the multiverse, there are different theories pertaining to the multiverse. Some believe that any reality could happen. Schrodinger's cat is one of the examples where there is a cat in a box, let's say, and before you open it, it could be dead or alive, or it's both. Now, is your view on it is that both are happening at the same time, or is it one is happening because that's the world we live in, or there's another equal opposite that's happening completely on another thread, as you call it? My view is that we have absolutely no idea, as of today, which of those possibilities is the right one. A hundred years, a hundred years after quantum mechanics was discovered, decades after we've learned how to harness quantum mechanics, to make integrated circuits, to build all the kinds of wondrous technology that makes modern life what it is, there is a basic question about quantum mechanics that we've been unable to answer, and it's precisely that one, which is, if there are many possible outcomes in a quantum mechanical system, as there generally are, when you do a measurement or an observation and you find one outcome, say the cat is dead or the cat is alive, what happens to the other possibility? We do not know. As of today, the physics community has many proposals on the table as to what might happen, but we've been unable to answer this very basic but profound question. And to me, to my mind, the next revolution in quantum mechanics will come when we finally are able to answer that question. Okay. Well, quoting, I think, Stephen Hawking in uh, his book, Brief History of Time, he mentioned that there are three different possibilities. There's the possibility that we are in an ever-expanding universe and the laws of physics can never be truly defined because they are always changing, so to say. Whereas there is a concrete laws of physics, they are discoverable, and then is, I think, his last theory that he stated, correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, that we are able to, we are unable to pinpoint the actual finite end. And in, in terms of the expansion of the universe? Correct. Well, there are three possibilities there that people have discussed for a long time. One indeed would be the universe expands and continues to expand forever. One is that it expands for a while, reaches a maximum size, and then starts to reverse and collapses in on big itself, crunch. big crunch. And the third is somewhat in between, where it continues to expand but ever more slowly approaching a flat universe in the infinite future. As of today, we believe that the universe will continue to expand forever. 
because the recent discovery in 1998, which won the Nobel Prize last week, of dark energy in the universe tells us that the universe is not only expanding, but it is expanding ever more quickly. It's accelerating in its expansion. It's not slowing down, which means over time the expansion will just pick up speed. And if the dark energy is stable, if it doesn't decay, if it doesn't dissipate, then that will be the way the universe evolves into the ever further future. We have this TOE, this theory of everything that many people have discussed in the scientific community, which nobody really knows what it is, a combination of quantum mechanics and relativity, trying to find a unified form of gravity. What do you feel can be the major discovery point to aid us into understanding exactly how the universe, the first cause I call it, what happened before the Big Bang? What caused these four particles of high-low nuclear fusion, electromagnetism, and gravity to come together and how were they created? Well, the deep missing piece of the puzzle is the unified theory that Albert Einstein sought but never found, a theory that would put together all of nature's forces and all of matter into one consistent mathematical framework. And the theory that we think might be the unified theory is this approach called string theory, but string theory has a long way to go before it is able to give rise to experimentally testable predictions that will allow us to determine whether the theory is right or wrong. And again, you can't believe anything until it has that experimental support. If string theory were right, then in principle we might be able to use that theory one day to peer back using our equations to the Big Bang, or maybe even before the Big Bang, if that makes sense. No, if these ideas of multiverse make sense, then that would be the case. Our universe would be one example of a Big Bang, but there could be other Big Bangs out there. That could have happened before hours or after hours. So these are exciting prospects and possibilities, but they're, as of today, completely hypothetical. What I was speaking about uh, during the panel was the, the concept of showing the holograms, how we could be holographic projections of black holes, whatever, how your wallet could be reconstructed in the show. That's a bit of a spoiler, sorry. But how can we exemplify that to the people? Because there's a lot of people in there that were like shaking their heads in the panel, maybe in disbelief and not understanding it. How would you say that we can explain this maybe to the masses and try and mainstream this concept that many people will call craziness or just completely disregard? Well, it should be called craziness at some level because even I think one of the scientists in our program, Jim Gates, rightly says that this idea that we might be a hologram is so foreign, it is so beyond what we would anticipate that even us physicists, me included, look at this idea and we can't really wrap our minds around it. Yet as we also describe in the program, if you follow the logic of mathematics, mathematics that applies to black holes, and black holes observationally confirmed, they're real. If you take that mathematics to its logical conclusion, it seems to suggest that what we see around us may be a holographic projection of more fundamental ideas that exist on a thin two-dimensional surface around us. It is, as we say in the program, so new and so bizarre that we are struggling to comprehend what it really means for the nature of reality. But I would say that the general person should feel that they are part of exactly the same mindset if they think this is crazy, if they think this is bizarre, because that's how we react to it ourselves. And what would you suggest as a type of educational strive for students or upcoming students going to college or graduate school? What do you think a good career field is for the future, considering what you are, you're involved with? Well, ultimately, you have to pick what makes you excited, what makes you want to get up in the morning and go to work, because otherwise work becomes dreary and a drag. And if it's something you want to do, you get up and you're excited by it. I get excited by these deep questions of the universe. What's the nature of time? Where did the universe come from? What will the universe be like in the far future? What are the fundamental forces? What are the fundamental ingredients? These kinds of questions I just find so compelling and captivating. And if you're the same way, then theoretical physics would be a direction to go. But the point is you don't have to be. And there are many other exciting things to think about in the world. And the challenge is to find what really fires you up. How good at math are you? Math is a critical part of theoretical physics. So yes, I mean, I began life excited by mathematics and equations. And that's then segued into equations that describe the universe, or that we hope describe the universe. So what I once read quite a while ago is that there's different theories, either there's the universe, there's the multiverse, but I also read something once about pocket universes. Same thing. 
So the pocket universes are the same as the bubble universes that we showed in the clip in the program, and they constitute the inflationary multiverse, which is the content of this fourth program, November 23rd, that we'll be showing. Same, same idea. Okay. What, what do you feel about the, the idea that's been proposed by some that we have more neural connections in our brain than matter in the universe? Uh, well, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but the brain is a very complex beast, and it is in many ways the next frontier. We've tried to understand the universe on the biggest scales, cosmology, black holes, and so forth. We tried to understand the universe on small scales using quantum mechanics. What we haven't really yet been able to do is understand the universe on the most complex of scales. And the brain is a wonderful example of a complex system, so that is a wonderful frontier area of research. There, going back to black holes for a minute, there's been many different theories out there that things are just destroyed in a black hole. The theory that we watched just in the panel is that there is this concept that it's a project that it's destroyed, but the information is stored on the outer linings of the black hole. Then there's another theory that it's like a, acts like a wormhole or a loop yeah, to another yeah. universe. Now, are we? Do you believe? Are we ever going to be able to test that realistically, even in a hundred years? Testing is unlikely, I think, certainly on the scale of 100 years. But I think that we will understand the math much better. And we'll be able to test that math in other less exotic domains. So we'll have confidence that it is describing how the world works. And then that math should tell us what is the true nature of the singularity inside a black hole. Is it a tunnel to another universe? Is it the end of time? Or is it something even more exotic? We don't know yet. Now, do you believe in, let's say, the concept of time travel? Time travel to the future, absolutely. And we described that in the program because Einstein showed us how to do that. Spend time near a black hole, travel near the speed of light. These are ways in which you can leapfrog in time. The big puzzle is can you travel back? That's and, actually and I suspect the answer is no. And that's what I have had that same theory where I've mentioned to many people that someone says, oh, well, you can go to the future and then, hey, you can figure out sports scores or try and make money, like in Back to the Future, sure. the movie. No, but coming back coming is back, unlikely. I unlikely. think the answer is probably no. And why would you say that it is unlikely to Every approach back? that people have written down has seemingly been unable to hold water under further scrutiny. And the logical paradoxes are pretty severe if you could travel to the past. So that doesn't mean it is impossible. I just think it's very unlikely. And, and we may travel and to a different past well, or yes, future. Yes, that's the way you would get around that logical conundrum. When you travel to the past, you find yourself in a copy of the universe from which you began. So you're never bringing any information from the future to the past in a single universe. That's a very clever way to skirt around the logical inconsistencies that would otherwise ensue but it's hard for me to see how that will really be realized in any concrete proposal. So I suspect the answer is no. I think most physicists think the answer is no, but it's an open question as of today. To try and wrap up here, how would you say, the, going back to the projections in the program, now, would you say that this is going to somewhat symbolize or parallel to a concept of a matrix or a matrices where we could, in fact, this projection may actually be, in fact, we are in a computer or in those pods, yeah, so to say. I talk about that in, in my latest book, The Hidden Reality, as one of the possible ways in which there could be parallel universes that exist within supercomputers as opposed to in the real world, at least as we conventionally think about it. We don't talk about that here in the fabric of the cosmos, but it's an exciting and odd idea and one that has been made popular through the, I, the shows like The Matrix. So I, I find it as compelling as everybody else but I don't see any version of it on display yet in the world as we know it, but who knows, in the far future, things might change. Now, going just to your personal life a little bit, I see that you have a, a family, you brought them here to the console, so you probably have a good connection with them. How would you feel that you see your children's futures parallel with yours? Do you see yourself living and dying like everyone else? Do you see life progression? yes. I'm not, you know, Ray Kurzweil notwithstanding, I think we all are gonna die. And it, how do you see, I'd say, the next 50 years? That's an exciting time, you know, especially in areas that are going to probe the fundamental nature of the physical world. So ex physics is an exciting field. Computer science is exciting. Nanoscience is exciting. Astrophysics is exciting. Neuroscience, I think it's a great golden age of science. I'd like to leave you with one last question. Sure. Try to inception here. How would you say the dream world, specifically lucid dreaming, can in fact 
be part of this real world or if we are living within a dream of a dream and it being so real we're you know I you know it, it's a it's always a possibility that someone's gonna smack me in the face and I'll wake up tomorrow and all this was just a dream it becomes absurd to live your life that way so it's a interesting mind candy to think about but in terms of day-to-day -day life no I don't really think it has any real applicability but maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll say oh he was right all right, thanks so sure. much for taking the time. Thank I appreciate you. it. Sure. Pleasure. <laughs>